All right, uh, that that's great. Okay, before starting um, uh, the presentation, uh, you guys can hear me all right. Uh, just a bit about myself. My name is Temur Ali Danish. I'm a student at Concordia's University of Edmonton, and uh, I'm hoping to finish up my master's in, in information systems assurance by this December. And uh, this was part of my research. Uh, part of my final research project, which uh, I had to finish uh, to actually get my uh, studies uh, completed. And uh, we we started uh, thinking about different things uh, which uh, we can research on. And well, you, all of you on in security and risk or in any kind of business uh, uh, know that uh, <clears throat> COVID is the thing that's that's kind of setting the trend of the future, at least at the moment, right? So we said, okay, what COVID has actually affected us and uh, the contact tracing was is one of the things that's before the vaccines came and was one of the things which was uh, used to stop the spread of it, right? And we said, okay, <clears throat> let's see how that's working. And uh, how can actu we actually see that uh, people can use that to full effect? Because um, given that, uh, <clears throat> given the skepticism that was uh, surrounding the COVID uh, by, by general public, even at this moment, we are not able to get everyone at the same page. People aren't sure about thing um, like even vaccines. People aren't uh, believe people weren't believing uh, contact tracing back then. And uh, are we uh, th that was kind of the purpose. So we, we wanted to see if the contact tracing apps were actually uh, protecting the public uh, personal privacy. They weren't affecting the things uh, a person would be concerned about using any sort of app. So uh, we, we, we got our assumptions up about them. Uh, we said, okay, uh, people are gonna use the contact tracing application. So um, these apps are going to ask about some permissions, for example, location permissions or Bluetooth permission, whatever. There are, there are, there are a lot. We're going to talk about that later. Apps are going to ask about those permissions. Uh, and some of them may be dangerous, like location permission. And uh, whoever uses his Android or even iOS uh, knows that uh, location permission is categorized as a dangerous permission. But that's something that that is needed that might be needed for a contact tracing app. So, okay, first thing, they might use dangerous permissions, but they might also use some dangerous permissions which aren't really required. Like location is required, but what if an app is asking for your camera permission? How would you, I mean, if you're installing an app, uh, you want to help out, you want to say, okay, I want, I want to uh, do the contact tracing with the government and stuff. I want to step the, uh, stop the spread, but why an app is asking for my camera? What's the purpose of it? So oh, we wanted to see if there are some of those uh, scenarios which, where the these applications are asking for dangerous permissions, which aren't really required. Uh, the third thing was that uh, apps are, going to store some data uh, uh, when when they're tracing uh, one like locations, latitude, longitudes, uh, or other stuff. They may be stored at locations which, which can't be trusted by people, especially given the circumstances of COVID. So let's say uh, there is an app in North America and uh, it's the storage locations are in uh, or in here in U.S. in Canada, but uh, there will there uh, there will be some scenarios where these locations won't be in this these countries, and 
that's that's actually not a problem, but that could affect a a, a, gen, a person's trust uh, who is not too much aware of uh, uh, why this data is stored outside. Uh, maybe there's a cloud scenario or something like that. So we wanted to see, okay, maybe there are some data stored at locations which may not be trusted uh, by a general person, but uh, My camera suddenly stopped. Can you, I'm gonna ask you again, can you actually hear me or no? Okay, thanks, it just stopped on me. Okay. You also could see my presentation, right? I'm gonna show it again, right there. So, can you see the presentation now? Oh, great, great, brilliant. Okay, so you saw my, uh, well, we were at the assumption. So just to summarize them again, uh, just to summarize the, okay, Mahmoud Taha, you can't see the presentation or you can now. Okay, great, let's start. Sorry for that interruption. Okay, just to summarize that again, apps may use dangerous permissions which are required. They may use some permissions which aren't required and we'll see where the data is stored. Uh, to get our testing done, we selected our data set from the applications which uh, are being used at the moment in North America, Canada and United States. Um, in Canada, basically there are only <clears throat> three apps. There's one federal app and uh, British Columbia and Alberta have their own contact tracing application, or at least the, that was the case when this research was started. Um, our operating system, which we tested upon was Android. Uh, we had the option of iOS, but uh, whoever has worked in testing or development would know that it, it's, Android gave us a little bit more freedom on testing. It had more tools. Even though the tool we used, I'm going to talk about that later, had an option of iOS, but uh, that was something that that was uh, we we considered that okay, this is going to give us more detailed report if we select Android as a starting point. The third thing were uh, well, that's simple. 28 applications in our sample set. You might see uh, there might be some more added later on. Uh, it's been a few months uh, since we started the research, but. Uh, but basically three from Canada and about 25 from different United States um, states uh, were selected. To get our uh, results, we designed our lab around uh, testing using a tool called MobSF. Uh, it's a brilliant tool uh, if anyone of uh, anybody of you is in malware testing or in any sort of uh, app testing uh, and they don't have the source code of it, uh, just the APK or not even the APK, you can actually search for the app within the MobSF tool. Um, they can actually uh, test a lot in this. Uh, it runs on Docker and as uh, Docker runs on any operating system from Linux to Mac to Windows. Uh, MobSF gave us two options of uh, statically analyzing and dynamically analyzing our ap applications. Um, uh, both ways were brilliant. A dynamic analyzer actually gave us way, it can give us way more detailed report of each and every activity and where the permissions are um, uh, needed. But uh, for, uh, for our research, static analyzer gave us cute enough reports, um, like it just took the APK, we just, um, you can download the APKs if you can, or you can search uh, inside the MobSF tools for the APKs, and uh, it can give us the reports uh, like uh, which domains it, the app is trying to connect to, what are the locations of those domains, uh, which certificates the app 
uh, is using uh, and uh, which permissions these apps uh, these apps are using, uh, which was more uh, related to our research. And it also gave us the idea of categorizing those permissions are as dangerous or um, normal uh, permissions, but uh, that's something uh, we could have seen from the Google documentation, but it wasn't easy. Uh, it was good that it actually gave that uh, the, the, the dangerous or normal category of the permissions inside the reports. Uh, well, we got uh, upon testing them, we went to see how correct our assumptions were. If you could remember, I'm, I can repeat them again, that apps may use dangerous permissions. There might be some permissions which are needed, but well, there could be some dangerous permissions used that are not actually needed. And uh, the third was, are the data, is the data stored at a trusted location? So upon testing our first assumption, we found out there are 40, 48 unique permissions used by these 25 apps. And even though there were 34 normal permissions, there were 14 dangerous permissions. So uh, by dangerous, they don't mean they're uh, they're not needed, but, but that's something our next assumption will test. But our first uh, assumption, the first assumption of our hypothesis was correct that yes, apps are gonna need the dangerous permissions. This, uh, the second thing was, okay, well, dangerous permissions are needed, but there, there, there might be some apps that are asking for permissions unnecessary. That could be due to um, not, uh, well, that could be due to lots of things, maybe using uh, methodologies, which could be uh, easily avoided and et cetera, et cetera. But uh, well, <clears throat> the results of that were, uh, yeah, there were some permissions which were actually required. I'm going to talk about that in the next slide, but uh, let's talk first about the unnecessary dangerous permissions. So a bit about uh, the functionality first. Normally, the uh, the most common method we uh, found out uh, of using uh, these category of permissions to use the uh, contact tracing was the use of location permission, which was, which was uh, understood location uh, can be used for contact tracing. But there were some permissions like write external storage to card audio and camera, which are not actually needed uh, uh, in the app's functionality, or these permission could be easily avoided and used, uh, and or other, other ways can be used. For example, let's talk about write external storage. Uh, if some app is actually trying to save some data, um, they could easily save them in shared preferences. Uh, and given that most of the data is just the text-based, uh, this permission wasn't necessarily needed. About record audio and uh, record audio and camera, uh, they could. I mean, you can easily avoid them in this sort of a scenario where people aren't that much trusting, and there is a there is a, a there is an app which is trying to access your audio and camera. Uh, uh, people are not going to install that kind of an application. Um, uh, the good thing about uh, this result was these two were only used by one app uh, that was Punch Alert app. Uh, it had some other functionalities which it was using for the record audio and camera, but uh, they could have been, the apps should have been isolated from one another. They should have just released another app for um, the other things it was doing. Uh, about the uh, about the most used permissions, access find location was used about five times, meaning there were, uh, this permission was actually used by five different apps out of, 28 applications, only five of them used it, uh, this permission. And uh, it's understood why it was uh, asking for this access find location permission because it's the easiest way to contact trace. About uh, out of our, our 28 
data set applications, only six apps were actually requiring dangerous permissions, which was a good thing. Uh, it, it, it doesn't mean that if an app doesn't ask for, ask for a dangerous permission, uh, it's not affecting your privacy in a way, but it's better if it doesn't ask it because there is, uh, if, uh, if an app has, <clears throat> uh, if app has an access to your, uh, uh, things like your location, your camera, anything that ca is categorized as a dangerous permission, uh, it's easier to uh, uh, have a, an a, a, have an effect on uh, users' privacy. Uh, Punch Alert was the app which used most dangerous permissions. It has it had about nine permissions, uh, which was which were dangerous. It used about more than 30 total permissions, but nine out of them were dangerous. Digging deep into uh, into this app, as I mentioned before, this was more like a community app, which had a contact tracing functionality uh, as a, uh, as what do you say, as an add-on. But uh, again, um, there were better ways of handling uh, this. Uh, well, the people who already have this app are, aren't going to have a problem, but somebody who's installing it the, for the first time, specifically when the state has said this is our official contact tracing app, uh, when they're going to see that this app is asking for camera, for a raw external storage, for get accounts, for billing, uh, they're not going to install it uh, as easily as, uh, let's say, some other app which is not asking for these much permissions. About a third assumption, uh, which was the uh, the storage locations of the apps, um, it was a good thing to see that most of these uh, servers were in North America. Uh, there were a few in Europe, uh, uh, like Canada, uh, sorry, like Germany or Netherlands. Uh, I'm going to talk about them, why they were there. And there was one in Colombia, uh, one server, and that was all. There was also a reason for that, but let I'm gonna talk about these two in, in right now. So about uh, the servers in uh, uh, which were the do you can say the domains the apps were connecting that they were outside in North America. One was MikePants.com. Uh, digging a little deep into that, this is basically a developer on GitHub um, with the with different libraries like um, like Dalek like boxes, which is our material design, some things which are basic in Android development and uh, makes the developer's job easier. So there was nothing related to data storage in here. Exposure notification dot health. This is a bit, this is basically, uh, you must have got, uh, known that same kind of server used by iOS and uh, Android. Uh, for this, this was used by pretty much every application, uh, most of them at least. And uh, each app had it had, had different location for this. And when we kind of dig a little deeper into it, we found out that, that it was hosted on Google Cloud and whoever knows a little bit of cloud knows that, uh, well, it's more distributed thing and there and uh, the locations can be from from all over, over the world, and uh, that was one of the uh, domains which was uh, which had its servers in Colombia, but that was hosted by Google Cloud. So, if you want to, if somebody was uh, has a problem with uh, installing an app which has a uh, server outside North America, well, it's hosted by Google and it's a trustworthy server, so there wasn't a problem with that. Uh, out of all the apps, with the best app we considered <clears throat> was the COVID Alert. That's Canada, Canada's federal app. And when we say best app, it's not just, we're not talking uh, in context of functionality. It's just, it's uh, basically the privacy practices that app is using. Um, it only used six total permissions over normal uh, it used the Bluetooth to share codes. Um, that could be seen in more detail if 
there could be a, an effect on privacy there, but as far as the permissions it was asking about, uh, there wasn't a big concern there. Uh, the least like of a replication was the punch alert. <laughs> That's the third time I'm talking about. Uh, if it was a standalone uh, contact tracing application, it would have been fine. As an app, there wasn't too much problems with it. There aren't too much problems with it, but uh, when it was, um, when because it was a normal app, a community app where people can share problems, like there's a fire here and there, any emergencies, um, and contact tracing was uh, released as an add-on on it. That could have been easily released as another app, as far as if you talk about just the type of types of permissions this app was asking about. So, so to conclude uh, my talk here, uh, uh, as for uh, or, or as far as our testing was concerned, uh, considering the permissions the apps were asking about and our static analysis, uh, privacy wasn't affected, uh, except in few and in few. I again, I would say the punch alert app, and even there. If we really dig deep into it and see, okay, this app has some other fun functionalities, privacy wasn't a concern as far as the permissions were concerned. Uh, out of all the permissions, uh, there were only three which gave which which made sense. That was access find, course, and uh, background location. Uh, so. Other 11 apps, uh, 11, uh, sorry, permissions uh, could have been easily avoided and something else could have been used in their uh, in their place to get the apps a little more uh, privacy uh, focused. And uh, the locations of the data storage were I mean, there wasn't uh, there wasn't even one server we found out we which was in where the IPs or the locations, or maybe the server was not. Uh, the, that testing gave us a problem. wasn't a trustworthy server. So uh, even our third assumption was uh, well, our the the third assumption was actually there. The data storage may be. Uh, the, the location may be untrustworthy, but they were not. So that was a good thing. So that's the end of my talk. I would love some questions from you. And I'm just going to leave this uh, slide right here, <clears throat> my conclusion slide, so you can actually ask something uh, about it. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll be taking questions now. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Mr. Thank you, Cantons. Thank you, Mr. Smith. Thank you, Miss Sarah. Uh, yeah, uh, I would again. I would love if you guys would ask something here. Uh, something I might might haven't cleared here. Uh, it would be great if you can uh, give some insights or on some things you would like to see. Uh, maybe I need to. We need to see a little more of those maybe research on them a little more, see them in a, maybe in a, with your perspective. <clears throat> uh, yes, that was uh, that was a part of our, uh, our data set. Yes, the Alberta's COVID tracing app was one of the apps we actually uh, tested. And uh, it's actually, uh, we used only one permission, which was, uh, categorized as uh, a dangerous one. I can actually tell you right now, I have the table here. So yeah, Alberta's COVID tracing app was evaluated and uh, it had uh, it only asked for a location app uh, permission, I, I would say, which, which was 
which could be categorized as a dangerous permission. Thank you very much for all, uh, 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 again all for for your time, and bye, goodbye.